Hi, welcome to week two of CNET 54, the PC troubleshooting course. Let me share my screen and we'll just briefly go over um, what's happening this week. Right, so if you come in the CNET 54 and go to the modules, go down to week two, you see um, that uh, there is a uh, lab video, which is this video that I'm doing right now. And I'm also going to do another lab uh, or a video where I'll show you the lab. All right, so this will um, contain some information here. There's also, I found this really great website that I want you to look at before you come to lab on Thursday. But I'm going to add some more information to this page. So um, check that out later today. All right, so we have lecture two. We have homework two, which is due before 11.59 p.m. on Sunday night. We have the troubleshooting forum. And I also included the manual for the motherboard that's in our computers in room 405, right? So make sure you get the homework done before Sunday night, 11.59. And then, of course, the troubleshooting forum is due on Thursday before midnight on Thursday night. All right, so let's, let's look at this week's lecture. All right, so we'll let this load up. And I don't want to do that, so let me download it. And open it here. All right, so this is all about working inside the computer. So I always ask this question, if, if we met in person for the lectures, I would ask who, who um, controls the, uh, controls PC software? And most people always say Microsoft, but the answer is actually um, uh, Intel. Intel has a ton of, oh, actually, the software is Microsoft, right? The most common desktop is software, but the, um, the hardware is Intel. So you, you can read through this on the, the software and there's some really good information on this. And as a, I think I had a conversation with um, somebody, I think it was in 54 last week, um, and I think it was, yeah, it was in 54. And we were talking about how Apple has moved away from the Intel chips, right? They're now doing the M1 and M2 with the ARM chips. So uh, the, uh, Apple is, Intel's losing market share. And if you look at their stock price, because I, in my retirement account, I have some Intel shares, like eight of them or something, not a lot. And um, when I bought them, you know, like 10 years ago, they've gone up since then. But in the last two years, they've dropped probably 20 to 25 percent of their value. So um, there's that. Now, if you have a chance, although we're not going to break into groups, look these, look these terms up. So see what the OS x86 the Hackintosh, Mac Intel, Quartz, and Insanely Mac. Do a little research and see what those are. Um, and you'll see. So the, the hardware has really been Intel dominated. So Intel has come up with almost every major technology advance, USB, P PCI Express, um, SATA, DisplayPort, Thunderbolt, all of those are designed and built by Intel. So it, even though other companies may license it or have a name associated with it, it's really Intel that is where it has its genesis. All right, so let me, let me you can look at this. Um, Intel is more than 40% more sales revenue than the next closest semiconductor company and I'll know it's 10 times out of AMD. And they've been number one every year since 92. Now that's because there are a lot of manufacturers, HP and Dell, that really only offer Intel-based solutions. 
the gaming industry and the build your own computer industry has really taken a, a keen understanding and appreciation to AMD chips in the last several years. So that's where the market share is starting to switch is AMD. And again, uh, the stock market isn't everything, but if you look at AMD's trajectory has been increasing over the last five years, Intel's has been decreasing. So, you know, not that that has everything to do with everything, but you know, it's interesting. So I have another section here, I ask you if you should buy or build, you can read that. And I might ask you that during this week's lab, you know, if you read this section um, and get your opinion. And I wanna get to the end of this where I talk about the lab. All right, so this voltage stuff. Now, um, the power supply, power supply is probably not uh, the most exciting thing that you'll talk about when you buy, build your computer, but it may be one of the most important parts, um, but it's also the most overlooked. So if, if you pay attention on a power supply, um, the cleanliness, right? So like if, if you do a search and if you go to Tom's Hardware, um, dot com when and it's it's a site that has all kinds of reviews and benchmarks and suggested suggested hardware purchases uh there's a place in there where he rates power supplies and you have the gold standard and then the silver and then the bronze and if you do a search just go to amazon or um uh, you know, PC parts picker or wherever you, you search for hardware and search for power, say like a 750 watt power supply, you may see one that's listed for, you know, $85 and another one that's listed for $285. And they're both 750 watt power supplies. They both have similar connections, but what's the difference? Well, one of them's gold standard, the other one isn't. And that standard means how clean is the power? So in this week's lab, we're gonna look at these three DC power outputs, the 3.3, the five and the 12 volt rails are what they're called, they're outputs. And um, we are going to look specifically at what's known as ripple voltage. So again, like I mentioned, um, earlier in the, the page that has says uh, week two lab video, there's a site that I have a, a link to that goes into more detail about what voltage ripple, ripple voltage is on our power supplies. But um, each rail is like a separate circuit. Normally each rail is rated for a specific max amount of current. And because extreme amount of 12 volt current required by new CPU, voltages, there, there may be multiple rails. So you may have a minus 12 volt and then a plus 12 volt to mean, uh, to, to supply more than 12 volts total, all right? Now, in this week's lab, and I'm gonna do a demo of the lab before you start lab on Thursday. So make sure you're there at three o'clock. Um, but the rails, they, if there's ripple current, which let me, I have a picture of some ripple here. So here's low noise and low ripple. Then here's that same voltage level with a lot of noise, a lot of ripple. So let's say our divisions here are 0.2 volts per division. So that means there's 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.10, 1.2 volts from this peak to this peak is the difference of 1.2 volts. So if this was 12 volts DC here, that's now 13.2 up here and 10.8 down here. So it's going to fluctuate between, it should be a solid straight. DC is non-changing, right? It's, it's consistent. But if it goes up to 13.2, down to 10.8, certain components 
like our video cards, like our capacitors on our video cards, they're going to not operate properly with a lot of ripple on there. So this week, we're going to look at some power supplies. Now, we're going to use some power supplies that we've taken out of some older computers. Um, and we'll work with those. And then there'll be some oscilloscopes on the benches that I'll have you utilize. And again, I'm going to demo this during the lab. So what you want to do is um, uh, measure that. And then I go through and I talk about some of the characteristics of voltage, current, and power. So I want you to read these and be prepared. There's a question in the lab that asks you, what is the difference between the voltage RMS and the voltage peak to peak? So that's all in here. So you just got to read that here. All right. So again, I'm going to um, leave these lectures for those PowerPoints. There's a lot of them in there. I want you to read those before you come to the lab on Thursday. And then this week's lab will have to do with measuring the voltages using the DC multimeter and an oscilloscope on a power supply from a computer. So you'll get an idea of what this ripple is. One of the hardest things to troubleshoot is an erratic power supply. So if your power supply is going up and down and up and down on those, what should be consistent DC values, that can cause weird things to happen on your peripherals and or your system. So you wanna, you, you really wanna be aware of that. Now, again, a power supply is considered a black box. So normally you don't repair a power supply. Although, if you're interested, you can take our semiconductor course on uh, electronic devices, ELECT 51, and you can learn all about how to repair a power supply. But we don't do that in the CNET, we just introduce it. All right, so that's it for today, and I'll talk to you on Thursday in person. Take care, bye.